Hello everyone, and as always, welcome to a very special Easter edition of Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're finding, learning, turning the great strategy games, and I hover over, well, I guess that's just the southern island of the Hawaiian chain, as once again, we're back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals edition, and I apologize for the late stream today. Family obligations, as you might imagine. Uh, if it's your cup of tea, happy holiday. If it's not, let's play War in the Pacific. Or either way, let's play War in the Pacific. <laughs> uh, but happy Easter uh, to all of you out there. Uh, where are we? Where are we? When are we? We are December 21st, 1941. We're going to resolve the turn as we do every Sunday. Uh, as you can see, Hawaii here. We've been going around Australia, though, and when we left off last time, we were here with the Aussies. I uh, love me some Aussies. The finest criminals the, the English ever kicked out of their empire. Uh, yes, we were down here at Carnes, I believe. Eh, maybe Townsville, but let's go look at Carnes very quickly. Um, okay, we've got one level bomber here. It's not a whole lot. Uh, we're doing some naval search. Now, question how important naval search is down here, although uh, it's very possible it was this naval search that detected a Japanese sub down here. Now, naval search can do that. It's less likely uh, since it's not running ASW, but ASW would only go half as far, right? So it'd only go to about here. I'm not sure that's going to help as much. So we've got naval search going on out here almost to Milne Bay, where we've now stationed a base force. We will build up a base here at Milne Bay. Um, at Carnes, we actually have three base forces, and I can tell you that's not supposed to be the case. We have one that is marching or will be marching to Cooktown. We have one that will be going to Portland Roads. Okay, so that makes sense. These others are supposed to stay at Carnes. So we've got one that's going up here to Cooktown. So we'll have a base force here. And then you see Portland Roads, which is not developed as a base yet. Uh, but we're going to send a base force up there and do that. The more that we can get up here into northeastern Australia, the better. It helps uh, with Port Moresby. The Japanese may very well land up here. And we need as many bases up here that we can do things with as possible. Possible bombing, possible getting, you know, troops and supplies over here so the more that we can build up northeastern australia the better okay so those are all set up we've got no ships in port and we head south and we head south to the very important base of townsville and townsville really is incredibly important uh i had never heard of townsville before i'm sorry it's just you know i'm not saying i'm that familiar with every australian town uh but it must be absolutely beautiful here. Now, I've been told that this is meant to represent the Great Barrier Reef, in which case maybe I should have heard of Townsville, and maybe I'll fly in there someday and go snorkel down the reef there. That would be cool as hell. Uh, but Townsville I'd never heard of. I mean, you know, everybody's heard of Brisbane and Sydney and Melbourne and whatnot. But if you look up here, once you get north of Brisbane, I mean, it's really Townsville until you get to the to the end here. And even then, like all the way around is Darwin. And my understanding is Darwin's a very small town, uh, relatively speaking. So, you know, here we are at Townsville after that big introduction. We have no ships in port. We do have this level bomber. It is also out, or level bomber squadron. It's out here running a naval search. Now, these planes do not have much of a range you can see here its extended radius is a six. Well, uh, that's not very far. Uh, so it's out here doing that. We probably have a local minesweeper because we should have a local minesweeper at every important base. We've got enough of them. We've got this uh, mine layer at Rabul, or we named it mine lay Rabul or Moresby. We've already laid some mines at Moresby. We'll stock this bad boy back up. Uh, I don't think we'll be heading back out to Rabul anytime soon. The Japanese are coming. The Japanese, you know, it's like Paul Revere. The Japanese are coming 
to Rabul. They've been bombing it too much to leave it alone at this point. Uh, and so we will probably not be sending any ships up there. Let's put it that way. Um, and so this is the mine layer, Bungary, and we'll need that to get some uh, mines uh, stocked up here. If we look on the Bungary, it's got no mines right now. We've now released those from our stockpile, and hopefully uh, we will get that loaded up in the next turn or two and head it probably back up to Moresby. I would imagine. Uh, we have a regular minesweeper, not a local minesweeper, for Moresby, and we've given it a little patrol zone. We must have done that last time. Uh, we have the Canberra and the Perth here to give AA support. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes if you don't have enough anti-aircraft batteries here, and we really don't have much, I don't see any AA batteries here. Uh, you may want to take one of your cruisers or light cruisers that has pretty good anti-aircraft, and the Canberra certainly does at a 348, and put them at its strategic locations to do nothing but try to shoot down enemy aircraft if they should come this way. We've also got the Perth out here, which has a very healthy 220 for a light cruiser, and we've just got them sitting together into a task, in a task force. Uh, we then have the AM Lark, which is a local minesweeper. Now, we've named this Local Minesweep Darwin. So that leads me to believe we should probably send this up to Darwin. Okay. I don't know if it has the... I didn't look at the endurance. Does it have the range to get up here? It does. Okay. So we'll send this up here to do some minesweeping at Darwin. And set that as, as its home port. And then set home port, Darwin. Set destination to Darwin. Now we have this French minesweeper, the Chevrolet. Gosh, I kind of impressed myself with how I said that. Uh, we've got no destination being set here. Uh, how can we fix that? What can we do? Well, let's go down here. Let's click that we do actually want this to be based at Nomaya again. Uh, sometimes when you have this, okay, it's not going to let us do it again. Uh, let's disband it, okay, um, and let's go back and reset it into a task force. Sometimes, you know, it's an older game. Sometimes you got to mess around with it a little bit. Uh, local minesweep, the Chevrolet. No, that is just a regular minesweeper. My bad. Uh, minesweeping, there we go. So we'll set that up to be a minesweep. The Chevrolet is right there, done. Now, we can set its destination. That destination will be Nomaya. And we'll have it go back out here. Uh, again, this is a French holding uh, at during these colonial times. I actually don't know what the history of Nomaya is. Uh, I don't know now, is it part... I don't know. I don't want to say. I, I don't think it's probably part of Australia. I think once colonial times ended... Mm, I don't know. I just don't know. Is it still a French colony of some sort? Well, not a colony. A French protectorate or whatever the hell they call them now when they're not really colonies. <coughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on, crying Mimi? I saw you just followed. Thank you very much, and thanks for stopping by. Uh, we are doing some war in the Pacific. I will probably do some more in the East, too, later. I did put up the basic tutorial, Part 8, uh, which is about how to start thinking about setting your air directives manually and doing that kind of thing. Uh, hell, for people that have been playing this game, War in the Pacific, for a long time, that seems like child's play, setting up, uh, you know, in War in the East, too, you set up these big overall directives, which are, you know, essentially like, hey, we want to bomb here, uh, with bombers, you know, I mean, this, we get down to the squadron level sending them around, so it's just child's play if you played War in the Pacific. Although, I must say, it is a little confusing when you first get into it, uh, but hopefully that tutorial helps helps people and helps you understand it a little bit. Um, okay, we've got local Minesweeper Darwin, the Lark, it looks like the Lark is heading north as well. Now that's interesting. Okay, so we have a Minesweeper that's heading to Moresby. We have a local minesweeper, Townsville. That stays here. The mine layer. Okay, 
So the Finch is going to go up and do some minesweeping, uh, general minesweeping around Moresby. I like that patrol zone. We obviously set that up last time. The Chevrolet will be heading out to Nomaya. The Lark over to Darwin. That all looks fantastic. And then we have the transport, Mungana. Kind of an ugly name. Uh, that's supposed to be taking things out to Milne Bay, I think. Oh, it's got the 44th Australian already loaded on or started. So I guess we did load this on last time. Um, coastal battery, base forces. These should all be set to Townsville. Yep. Okay. There's our 44th Australian that will be going to Milne Bay. Uh, again, this is really just to give you kind of a backstop to Moresby. If the Japanese should get here, you don't want to be kicked all the way off of Papa. Uh, and so, you know, this gives you another base to keep a foothold on Papa. I just like to say Papa New Guinea. Uh, sounds fun. Uh, what is this armored unit here? What are they doing? They're part of the Australia Command. They're also supposed to be here at Townsville. Okay, that all looks good. Looks like we went through it last time, but never hurts to go through it twice. Uh, Rockhampton, we've got some level bombers that are doing naval search out of Rockhampton. I like that vector. That looks beautiful out there across the blue coral sea. Uh, there's a base force here just helping with the aviation support. It provides eight. Aviation support, that's all good. Bundaberg, what's happening in Bundaberg? Uh, we've got the 29th Australian Brigade out here. Okay, uh, it's got an assault strength of 70, so it's no pushover. Uh, it's just sitting here. Might sit here the whole game. It's under the Australia Command. Uh, we also have the base force here. This was strategically moved here, and we actually took the Bundaberg force and put it up in Milne Bay. Wow, we're fancy. Let's click that over to combat, and it'll just sit here and sit here and keep on base forcing. All right, Brisbane. Of course, Brisbane, always going to be very important. Um, okay, RJL518. This is why I love my subscribers. Uh, New Caledonia is a special collectivity, that's what they call it, huh, uh, of France in the Southwest Pacific Ocean. Okay, uh... I'd like to visit sometime. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll send. I'll put up video on the channel of me visiting Nomaya and kind of going around and saying, "Oh my gosh, this is Nomaya." You know how many times that I've, you know, referenced this place and in, in playing War in the Pacific. Um, that's cool. Thank you for the information. I really. That's why I love you guys. Uh, uh, level bombers, ASW. They're running out here. We don't need to train them anymore. Let's. You know, we're going to click off some of these trainings when we see them. Uh, so now we got them running at 50% with no training. They shouldn't build up any fatigue. You can see it's a very small arc. Uh, if you're new to the game, ASW or anti-submarine uh, missions by planes only run at half of their uh, kind of normal radius. So if we were doing naval search, it might be out here. Uh, when we're doing anti-submarine, because I guess they got to really get down on the binoculars to see a submarine. Uh, it's only half. And then we have another ASW group here. They've got an experience of 49. Okay, uh, we're going to turn their training off as well. Uh, we've got them going to their max. What is their max? Okay, so it's running down here. Not sure I love that, but we've got a little fanned out here close, and then we got one down here. I think maybe the idea of that arc and why we set it up that way is because Sydney is down this way and there's a lot of traffic that comes between Sydney and Brisbane. Uh, and some of the Sydney stuff comes up here before heading east. I don't know. I may be just making up things there, but I, I suspect that's why we would run it that way. Uh, the local minesweeper here at Brisbane, that all looks good. We've got uh, a full transport task force. Okay. This is what took Bundaberg, the Bundaberg uh, base force, up to Milne Bay. And if we hover over it, you could say, oh, Bowen, Bowen, I'm sorry. The Bowen base force up to Milne Bay. Now they're back here and they don't really have a whole lot to do. We do need transports, but we don't necessarily need them here, unfortunately. But we can go make sure that's true. Let's go through the uh, ground troops here. We've got the 7th Australian Combat, uh, the 11th, 
We've got the base force and a coastal force. Okay, that's all supposed to be at Brisbane. We're not going to be moving those for the rest of the game unless all hell breaks loose. And so, okay, it is what it is. Uh, we've got two ships in port. Oh, the Nisqually came out. Okay, uh, this is one of those conversions that we did. So early in the game, uh, you've got these AKs, which are transport ships, that would normally just take supplies and or fuel, well, not and, but supplies or fuel out to locations, okay? Some of those you can convert into what are called tenders, and now you see cargo ammunition. So we can put ammunition on this eventually, or maybe now if we want to, and they can go along with assault task forces or... I mean, it doesn't have to be an assault task force. It can go along with an a task force, and it can resupply ammunition. Um, and so we try to convert as many of those in Australia as we can because you don't have that many of them. Uh, <laughs> crying Mimi. I'm getting closer on Luftflotte, right? Now I, like, overpronounce it. I know I do because I've taken so much crap for how I pronounce German words, you know, like, uh, I think I've got Luftwaffe, right? I, I think so. That's how I always hear it on documentaries, but those are English speakers as well, right? And so uh, Luftflotte, or no, Luftflotte. I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Now I, it's almost become a running joke. I, I, I over pronounce it all the time. I'm sure of that. So the Nisqually is ready. We're just going to let it sit here. We don't have any real need for it now, but it's really nice to have. We've also got the AP Montoro here, so if we do need to transport some more ships about, we've got the means to do so. And I don't know. I mean, we don't have a lot of units in Australia now that need to move. We've gotten most of the ones we wanted to get to Moresby. We've got something up to Milne Bay. We've taken some to Darwin. Most of them are marching. You can see them out here marching towards Darwin. And so eventually a nice transport ship like the Montoro there, we may send to the U.S. West Coast. And I'm tempted to actually do that now to stick it in with this. What does this look like? 37, 13, 13, 13. These all have really good endurances, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all 13s on the speed. I think I might send these all to the West Coast. The Montoro looks like a very like ship to those. And if we send them over to the U.S. West Coast, uh, we can, you know, there's a lot more things coming off the U.S. West Coast. Now, the only reason I'm pausing is because I don't want to be let, caught naked here in Australia where I got to get a unit somewhere and I don't have any transports. So I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to go down really quickly and look at Sydney before I give this orders and just see, do we have any transports at Sydney? We do. We have four. Okay, we have four pretty nice spread of what they do. Um, okay, so we're going to send this task force here this entire transport task force, which is now identified as a French transport or uh, task force because the Le Triomphant, <laughs> the, the Le Triomphant is a French destroyer. We're actually going to drop that off at Nomaya. Uh, why don't we eh. tell you what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to send this out to Nomaya. I'm going to tell it not to refuel. Do not refuel. Okay, we're already there with that. And I'm going to tell it to auto disband. And when it gets to Nomaya, there it's going to break up. But then the French destroyer can stay here and do anti-submarine stuff. And then we'll send the transports on. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. Because I want to have anti-submarine protection for four really nice ships like that out this way and then once we're here the transport should be fine we can send them all the way down to Tahiti if we want to be really careful uh, so that all looks good to me okay so that's Brisbane uh, Newcastle I think we just have the coastal forces here and we're on to Sydney good old Sydney Australia the Sydney Swans 
uh, <laughs> I know, Stanley. It does. Uh, it does get later and later. I didn't mean it f- for it to be that way. It was because um, Easter. If I'm being honest, we went out by the pool. That was my family time for Easter. Uh, we went out by the pool. Going to do some grilling later and that kind of stuff. So I do apologize, Stanley. I know it's late for you, and uh, I'm keeping you up past your bedtime potentially. Uh, but I will get back on. I will figure out a regular schedule. We had 10 a.m. my time forever, uh, but the stream for this war in the Pacific is just not stable at 10 a.m. I could think of a million different reasons, but ultimately it's just not. Uh, And so I'm thinking about doing it at 2 p.m. Pacific Coast time from now on and always having a stream at 2, maybe 3. I don't know. I'm still going back and forth with that, but I am sorry I'm keeping you up late on a Sunday night, Stanley. It might be Monday morning where you are at this point. Richard Smith. Well, hello, sir. Hello. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for those kind words. I do appreciate it, and I appreciate you uh, subbing and stopping by. We have a lot of fun on these streams. Uh, Stanley usually asks good questions. Sometimes. No, you always do, Stanley. Uh, Also, I need to start putting my link up for the Discord. There's been a lot of good discussions in the Discord about rules for this game, how to play this game. Uh, And I must credit where credit is due, many of those questions coming from Stanley. Uh, But also the War in the East 2 forum or channel channel on discord it's called a channel right um has been really active and people figuring out the best way on turn one to do your air war uh as the axis it's been really good a lot of really knowledgeable people which is what i was hoping for and uh so you know every day there's a couple people joining the discord and i think eventually it'll it'll be a real big crowd over there um but yeah, go. I'll put the link below this one. Sometimes I forget, uh, but I'll put the link below this one. Join that one too. Uh, but welcome, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Um, down at Sydney, what the heck do we got? We got five ships in port. Uh, we have the Lillian Luckenbach. Okay, so these have now, this is another one of these conversions. And again, you see cargo ammunition. This has been turned into an ammunition barge essentially. It's going to carry ammunition along with it uh, wherever it may go. And if you think about attacking some of those Pacific islands, you know, you get your troops down on the island. Well, I mean, they've got to be re-ammunitioned and whatnot. So that's what these conversions are. And this is another one. And it took them 12 turns to convert and I think that uh, now the Lily and Luckenbach and the one that we had up here at, uh, I can't remember, Townsville or Brisbane, have now converted. So, great. And now we have these four transports. Excellent. All right. So we don't have to do anything with those. They're going to sit here until we need them. Let's check out the level bomber uh, situation here. We've got uh, this one on ASW Patrol. Okay. We've got this one on ASW Patrol. All right, and we've got a one. We've got one training. Uh, that's at a 50 now. I don't know. I don't train as much as some people do. I'm like, look, you know, they're doing ASW patrol out here. They'll get better at it as they go along. Let's set this one on the map. We never do that. Let's set it on the map. Um, heck, I don't know. Well, now it's going to be hard to do with ASW patrol. I guess it's this. Oh, you know what? Let's go back and not do it that way. I always screw up this when I do it on the map. Yeah, 140, 160. Actually, I didn't do too badly. Uh, Hold on. Let's see. Let's see how far it goes out. It's only four planes. Eh. (laughs) That looks a little puny to me, guys. I don't know. Uh, Call me crazy. But I think that uh, we're going to... Whoa! Where'd my whole game go? Come on. Back to Sydney. There we go. Um, These are float planes. All right, let's just make them go... I don't want them this far down, do I? Let's have them go a little further north. Uh, 90's a little extreme. How about 120 to 160? What do I get out of that? Uh, Okay, it's coming straight out of Sydney. That's fine. We need all of the ASW straight out of Sydney as we can get. That's the planes. Now then we have the AM or ASW Sydney here. That's actually a minesweeper 
that we're using for anti-submarine purposes. Uh, we have the local minesweeper, and we've got this tanker. Oh, okay. So we've got a uh, U.S. Navy tanker here headed up to Nomaya. It is now loading fuel. Excellent. That all looks good. That's just the way we drew it up. Now, we will have a lot of ships coming into Sydney uh, from the U.S. West Coast, but we're not at that point in the game yet. Uh, we've got engineers out here. They're engineering. I'm not sure what they're really doing, but we don't really need them anyplace else. Down here at Sale, well, you know what? That's not true. Let's exit out of here for a minute and think. Now, we've got these engineers here at, Can at uh, Canberra. What are we doing? I mean, they, they, we don't need them here. There's no garrison requirement. There is an airfield at like, oh, I just love to say Wagga Wagga. There is an airfield. But ultimately, we could use these guys out, hell, I don't know, at Milne Bay, at Moresby, maybe even at Townsville. Let's see what the stats are on these. Uh, how many engineers do you have? 11. Okay, they do give some support. This is... Yeah, this is a little more beefy of an engineer unit. They've got an assault strength of 10. They've got uh, 11 engineers, like I said. They've got three engineers for vehicles. Okay. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to send them over here to Sydney and take them up to Moresby and Milne Bay. Oh, I can't get this one off. RAAF command, it's totally restricted to Australia. I didn't even look at that. Is this one totally restricted too? That's probably why we left it here. It is. And after that big buildup, I had an aha moment. Um, no dice. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, <laughs> I know you are, Stan. I know you're just messing around with me. Uh, <laughs> I've got I've got thick skin, Stanley. <laughs> going to make me cry. Cyberbullying, Stanley. Richard asks a very good question. I heard you say that the developer for this game said they would not do a new version. Question is, do you think this game needs a new version? Well, Richard, that's an excellent question. It's my absolute favorite game. I think it's the best game that has ever been made. Um, at least of this genre. Okay, I mean, you could argue one of the civilization games could be right there. This is the most complex, biggest game ever made. They will never make another version of this game like this, okay? They would make it like the new War in the East 2 or War in the West, where it's one week turns, you set big air directives. Um, it do would never have this level of detail where you played on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, I think Gary Grigsby himself said in an interview one time that they bit off way more than they could chew, and they just, once they were down the rabbit hole, they just kept going. Uh, I think they ended up losing money on this game. Now, if everybody keeps paying $79.99 for it all these years later, they may catch up, you know, who knows. But I, they'll never make a game like this again. It's just too much development time. Uh, for the amount of money they could make on it, uh, you know. So it won't be like this, but they may eventually put out a war in the Pacific that's like the new Grigsby games, uh, like a war in the East too, uh, with kind of a newer UI. I don't really think this game, once you're used to the user interface, I think it's all very intuitive. Now, I know it looks old, and I know that a newer generation of players looks at these little buttons up here and all of this information and setting the task forces the way we do, and their eyes glaze over. I do understand that. Uh, but for us old-timers that have played it for a while, like it, it's just totally intuitive to me now. And so for a game, if they were going to make the game exactly the same and just put a new... Oh, UI over the top of it. I would be fine with that, I think. I mean, it could use an update. Uh, but I, my suspicion is, if we're going into suspicions, if you watch my War in the East 2, I talked about this. Uh, War in the East 2, of course, is just the Eastern Front. And they have theater boxes for Italy, North Africa, Western Europe, etc. Um but they have modeled every single hex of Western Europe, England, 
North Africa, Italy, Sicily, they're setting that game up to be a complete war in Europe. And if they do that, I do think that eventually they'll do a war in the Pacific with that same kind of system. Okay, that's my speech for today. Um, let's go down here to sale. This unit's supposed to be here at sale. It's got an assault strength of 77. Okay, I think that's on the off idea that if the Japanese ever did land here or did land somewhere to try to take Melbourne, this would probably be the spot. Um, we do have, let's go back here for just one second. Did I miss anything? Oh yeah, base force. Well, that's no biggie, right? Uh, now then, at Port C, we have got a local mine sweeper. Why haven't I named that? I hate when I do that. Local mine sweep. Port C. Okay. Excellent. Uh, we've got that name now. That'll ease my conscience. Uh, combat. Port C. That's perfect. We've got the coastal defenses. And now we move to Melbourne. Melbourne all the way near the southern tip of Australia. It's got two squadrons of level bombers. This one's doing ASW. That one's doing ASW. I think this one does it this way, and the other one does it that way. I'm just going to trust that that's true. How many ships in port? We have none. All right. And we've got two task forces out here. We have an AO that's set on continuous to Bernie. So Bernie's down here in Tasmania. Uh, it's just set up that way. And then we have a cargo CS to Bernie that's taking supply. So this AO is taking fuel, and the other task force is taking supply down to Tasmania, the Tasmanian Devil. If you've ever seen that cartoon, one of my favorite characters ever. Just spins really fast and says nonsensical things. I like it. Local Minesweep Bernie. Okay. Uh, that's what we've got going on at Bernie. We have a base force there. Uh, Lonkinston. It's probably Lonston, right? I would, I'm just guessing how the Brits may say that. And then Australians, the former Brits that became Australians. Uh, Fuel Lonston, that's how I'm going to call it. Um, this is a CS that's going down there. And then cargo to the same spot. I'm not going to say it again so you Aussies don't yell at me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we've got fuel and supply coming down to Tasmania. Uh, what is this? This is in Queenstown, or Queenston, if you will. Uh, okay, we've got a little bit of assault strength down here in Tasmania in case anything gets crazy. We've also got some in Hobart, and that's it. That's Australia. I think we covered almost all of it. I guess, we, oh, wait a minute. Let's look at Adelaide really quickly. Make sure these forces, oh, okay, they are supposed to go someplace else, but we've already got this set up as a strategic move. We've got this base force. It could not be bought out. So every bit of engineering that we have on Australia left is tethered to Australia. We've got nothing out here. We already looked at Alice Springs. All right. Uh, Kangaroo Island. Well, that sounds fun. We've got a little SCS that goes out to Kingscote. Um, just taking some supply out there so the kangaroos don't starve. Uh, we got a base force, okay, uh, Port Augusta, now we do keep Port Augusta kind of going just because it's on this main rail line, this also has engineers, will they make a liar out of me, no, this is also restricted, you couldn't buy it out if you wanted to, and then finally Seduna, which we do keep uh, kicking because it's the fastest way to transfer planes east to west, uh, is Seduna to Esperance. And so we want to keep a base force there that does have just a, well, it's got 31 aviation support. Hell, I had to send one of these other base forces up here because I could buy this one out. How much would it cost? 87 points. Uh, it's got 12 engineers and 31 aviation support. Holy mackerel. Um... What's Port Augusta got? It's got regular support. It Oh, it does have 32 engineering support. Hmm. Now I'm tempted to send this to Seduna. Matter of fact, I'm just going to do it. 
Oh, I can't do it. It's completely locked. That's the second time I've done that today. This is a totally static locked unit. The game wouldn't let you move it. No matter what you do, Stanley. It's it's Launceston. 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 I mean, I don't know. Yes, Blinking Duck, you can press Z to see all the aircraft zones if you want to. I was just being lazy. Um, <laughs> War in the East China campaign. Jane Doe, you may be onto something. Uh, yeah, a few updates. Zooming in and out would be awesome. I mean, that would be my one thing that I'm like, hey. Uh, hey, the Cubs won today, Stanley. Don't give me a hard time. The Cubs are 2-1 and one on the new season. Two wins, one loss. We're off to a flying start. Um, <laughs> I'm never going to get Launceston correct or Launceston or whatever it is. I'm just not going to get it, Stanley. Uh, yes, as Blinking Duck was saying, we could go here to Sydney and we could see all of these if we hit the zones. You can see all of them everywhere if you really want to see all of the zones you're flying. Just hit Z and man, that's fun. Look at all of these different air ellipses uh yeah we got a lot of air going on when you look at it this way you're like wow did i set all those up holy smokes uh okay so we've looked through australia i think we've still got enough time before we resolve the turn to check out nomaya and start moving our way this way um we have no planes at Nomaya. We do have some coming this way, though, I think, from the U.S. West Coast. We have the Cruiser Australia out here. It is, again, providing anti-aircraft 348 on the air aircraft. So the flagship of the entire Australian fleet. I don't know. That's probably not true. Do they have any? I don't know. I, I doubt the, do the Australians have any battleships. I don't think they do. So a cruiser may be. I mean, it's the namesake of the country. Uh, local mine sweeping out here. Okay. Uh, we've got cargo that's out here unloading. Let's make sure we're not refueling. Yeah, we don't even need minimal refuel on that. Let's just do do not refuel. That will be then heading back to Sydney. It's set up as a continuous supply. Another continuous supply. This again out of Sydney. Yeah, it's got plenty. Let's just turn this to do not refuel, just in case you got any ideas about wanting to do that. This is a continuous supply out of Brisbane. That's actually not too far away at all, right? 19 hexes from Brisbane to Nomaya. And then we have some transports out here. Oh, okay. Now we split this transport task force up out here at um, Luganville. And we sent these guys down to Nomaya. What all do we have here? Uh, let's see. Let's see what we've got. The artillery regiment. Okay, we've got a full artillery regiment that is unloading at Nomaya. And you can see down here, this is that artillery regiment. And it looks like these are the first Americans to land at Nomaya. And indeed, it is true. And so they will continue unloading there. Uh, we're getting the Americans ready to go. Let's set, they've already got their objective set to Nomaya. They're already in combat mode. Perfect. Uh, we've got the new Caledonia detachment, infantry, uh, 27 assault value. Okay, it's French militia. And then we have some Kiwis here doing engineering. I didn't even know Kiwis could do engineering. No, actually, they're they're quite good at engineering boats, if the America's Cup is any indication. Um, so, yes, we have Kiwis, French, and Americans. Now all at Nomaya, cats and dogs do live together. Uh, okay, let's go to Comac. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Let's go back to Nomaya for one second. Did I miss anything? No, no ships in port, no aircraft. All right, we'll go up here to Comac. Uh, this is another place we have unloading. And this is an American base force, I believe, the 115th United States Air Force Base Force Engineering Unit. That will give us some aviation support out here at COMAC. Uh, we've got them set for COMAC. Combat. Perfect. The Americans have landed uh, out here near Australia. Finally, we're getting our first things here uh, from the Americans. 
Uh, Afate. I just like to say Afate. You know that. Uh, we've got an Australia. This is where the Bundaberg Base Force went. Okay. Uh, it's set for Afate. It will start building. Let's build fortifications at Afate. It's also. It's got no airfield capacity. I would like it to at least be a one just in case we need to fly something through there. I don't know why we would. Speaking of which, are we building at Nomaya? Let's check that out. We sh Whoops, what am I doing? What am I pushing? Yeah, we're building everything at Nomaya. I thought so. What are we building at Comac? Now, we brought... Okay, we brought this base force into Comac that's got a huge bit of aviation support. And let's look at this again. It's got... 27 aviation support and i'm thinking i would rather have that at nomaya what what do we have at nomaya i don't think we have hardly anything we don't um i want to have a base force here but it's got no airfield uh nomaya at least has a two all right i'm gonna march these americans straight down to nomaya uh they're they're gonna get to know I think I may have them change places with the uh, Kiwis. I think I'm going to do that. Can I strategic move them here? I don't think I can, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, yeah, it can. It can move down the major road. Okay, perfect. Uh, we've got them then moving, and we'll set them set to Nomaya. I could put them just back on this task force and sail them down here, but I'm being a little lazy. I'm going to make them march 184 miles <laughs> instead. I'm sure those guys would be cursing me, uh, no doubts. They're like, wait a minute, there's a transport ship right there, literally right there. Has this fully unloaded yet, by the way? Almost. Uh, okay, let's actually go back and cancel that for now. We'll set that back to co combat. Uh, let's let it fully unload. I don't want the strays uh, to be out here. Uh, but I will start taking... Eh, nah, I'll leave the engineers here. No Maya is more important. Uh, Afate, we looked at that. That transport's there. Where do I have the transport? Where have I told it to go back to? Brisbane. Okay. Where's this transport supposed to go back to? Brisbane. All right, so that's another American transport. We've got plenty of transports coming in here. What about the one at Comac? Brisbane. All righty, that all looks good. Let's just do Luganville, and then we're going to resolve the turn. So this transport task force uh, is out here with the Pensacola under an American flag for its AA. Oh, it's got 416. Now, the Americans had some really incredible anti-aircraft, that's for sure. Uh, this is an auxiliary gunboat patrol tender that's down here. Uh, okay, it's unloading its capacity. And then we've got the Republic, the Admiral Halstead, and the Coast Farmer. This will also be going back to Brisbane when it unloads. And you can see it's almost fully unloaded here. And let's go see what we've got at Luganville now. We've got a base force. Excellent with aviation support at a 27 plus looks like this is the standard setup uh 27 30 for support the standard setup for the american base forces and then we've also got an artillery battalion that has landed and that's also set for luganville awesome excellent uh, when we come back tomorrow and next through next week, we're going to go through all of the islands again, probably up through Hawaii, and then we're going to go look at Java and the Philippines, since those are kind of the hot spots. Well, Java not so much, but Malaya and the Philippines. Uh, heck, we may be even venture up into China. I'm a world traveler like that. Uh, <laughs> that's right, Stanley. Those American GIs are there. Lock up your Sheilas. <laughs> That's fun. That's good stuff. Um, probably. Those guys were probably rascals. Uh, oh, the AFL has started. Okay, well, you know, I cut the cord on cable. I thought I did. Now I'm getting YouTube TV, right? And so I'm pretty sure I could probably add that package, the AFL package, and see all the games. Um uh, now now you got me thinking. The hamster's running. Uh, uh, I've got too many things going on now. Stanley, I can't watch Australian footy. That's how busy I am. Um, 
Gosh, I love that game, though. I think if somebody said, if you had to pick one game, you know, that you would watch and you couldn't watch anything else, I would either pick American baseball or Australian footy. Uh, those are my two. I, I love English soccer, too. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm a sports fan. I can't help it. My wife's not a sports fan at all. Uh, so that's a nice combination because I don't watch nearly as many games as I would because she's like nine innings of a baseball game is a long time. Uh, anyway, Tanker Suva. Okay, I am over What am I doing over here at Suva? Let's go resolve the turn. So we're going to save the game. All right, we'll put it in our tw the last 1221 save. We will be on 1222 next time, Stanley. We've come a long ways. Cheers, mate. Um, I've got to have a little vino. It's a Sunday evening. Um, all right. I think then let's go to our home port. We'll go over to the top of Pearl Harbor. Now it's going to shoot us around everywhere anyway, but I always go back over here. You know, I never really pay attention to the moonlight percentage. Maybe I should. The forecast here is partly cloudy. I really don't even look at the weather that much. Not as much as I should. Uh, if I Later in the game, as I start planning big bombing missions, strategic bombing missions, I do. But this early on, you're just flying, you know, mission search missions. And so if they don't fly, they don't fly. What can you do about it? Gosh, this big old map looks good on my screen, boys. I'll tell you what. And now we move through it. Now, I had somebody complain on one of the videos. I can't remember which one. They said that the turn resolve take too, takes too long. And I'm like, man. I love the turn resolve. If you take off the combat animations and you just, you know, if you're reading the information and seeing the information and looking at the combat summaries, I love it. I love We Go games that like resolve all at the same time. Now, I, I could see why you would complain if you had combat animations on and that every combat on animation ran. That could take hours, hours. So don't do that. Don't do that. Um, assigning night missions, setting cap, <clears throat> plus you can learn a lot when you watch these resolve, you know, you think you'll catch things out of the corner of your eye. Like we thought we saw the main Japanese task force when it was actually returning to the home islands. And then we weren't sure we went and read the intelligence reports, all that stuff's fun. Oh yeah. We went on the offensive in China this turn now it's going to take a couple of weeks until that bears any fruit uh but we're striking back in china a little bit which i sometimes i just turtle down in china i'm going to make this one a little more fun we're going to go on the attack the japanese sitting there at wake crowing about taking wake island Gosh, I hate when that Tokyo Rose comes on and starts doing her business when they take an American base like that. I think, oh, one thing, do not let me forget next week, Stanley. We've got to build up midway. The Japanese haven't taken it yet, and if they're not going to take it, I'm going to go build it up. Uh, sometimes they take it right at the start. All right, we've got this, uh, the Indian brigades merging in Rangoon now. So they're fully unloading, which is good. You know, it makes you nervous when all those troops are out there uh, at Rangoon or the troop transports are here and they still have troops on them because the Japanese are coming. And so, you know, the faster we can unload those, the better. That is true, Alonzo. Alonzo brings up an excellent point that the combat animations are more accurate. Uh, and the, then the combat summaries you get. Uh, and so watching through the air war, the combat animations, you'll, you know, if you watch the little stuff go by, like, you know, this plane fires at that plane and this plane, you know, suffered this damage or whatever, it is a lot more accurate. So that's a very good point, Alonzo. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we got a sub attack near Wochi. Easy for me to say. We've got, uh, 
a Japanese cargo ship, the Hitachi Maru, the SS Gudgeon has launched four torpedoes with no success. Uh, the American subs. Ugh. Okay, now the... Oh, now see, I talked too early. An American sub got a hit here on a Japanese troop transport. So the XAPs, the Hakazaki Maru has heavy damage from the SS Tarpon. So four torpedoes, boom. Nice. I'll take it. Man, I love a good sub hit. Especially from the Americans, because you're just, you know, you're lucky. You're lucky when you get one that explodes. So, uh, nine Bettys are now hitting Clark Field at night. It's a night air attack. We're not running any night cap, so if they can hit the runway, good for them. Uh, runway hits three. Okay. We've gotten a lot of our air forces out of the Philippines. Uh, Bettys, five of them. Again, night attack on Clark Field. They did a little more runway damage. Uh, so Clark Field's going to be unusable in the not-too-distant future. Uh, same idea here. Runway hits one. So they're sending them in unescorted. <clears throat> but the AI or a good human player is going to realize you're not putting up night at, or night escort missions, uh, night cap. So you know if they send night bombers... Hopefully they get some operational losses to uh, to punish them a bit for doing that at night, but there's nothing you can really do about it. Okay, there wasn't a whole lot that happened overnight. Uh, we did hit a Japanese transport, and they bombed Clark Field. About what you'd expect. Uh, and now we get more of the 44th and 45th Indian Brigade up there at Rangoon getting off the boats, so that's good. Yeah, that's right. It, it does. It's uh, spotting which pilots in the aircraft. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. More unloading. I love to see this unloading. I was actually a little bit nervous uh, that those transports were going to get hit, but they haven't so far. All right. Uh, the Swordfish attacked the uh, the Havre, no, Maru, uh, a submarine attack near Kochi. Uh, okay, well, we sighted. Oh, the AK sighted it. We launched two torpedoes. Like, oh, you saw us? Hey, what's going on? Uh, the Porpoise is also right here, and it launched two torpedoes. No hits, no hits there. Uh, but we know where this task force is. Maybe something else will come over here, like the SS Perch. Uh, it's going after the Nanpo Maru. Mm, nothing happened. Oh, yeah, so this is an ASW attack. This is their PBs doing an ASW on the Perch. Nothing doing, though. Ah, now a Japanese sub is attacking our destroyer. Not a good idea, really. The destroyers oftentimes are too maneuverable and too fast to get caught by submarine or by torpedoes. Um, the Edwards, so it launched four, t four torpedoes at the Edwards. The Edwards then said, hey, where the heck did that come from? Started a search, didn't find it. We'll have to go look exactly where off the coast of Australia there it is. <laughs> now, see, that's why I never say things like that, Stanley. Uh, Japanese sub, the SSI-26, this is just off San Francisco. It did launch six torpedoes at the Hatfield, and it did get a torpedo hit. The Hatfield's on fire with heavy damage. Now, see, I just said that, and that's why the game did that it's like alexa if you have an amazon alexa if you say any word it will start sending uh ads to you based on that word uh i think the game does that as well japanese ships uh we've got a sub attack on the am wayala which is doing asw work out here it's a minesweeper but it's doing asw no hits there I'll be interested to see if that destroyer can make it back into port at San Francisco. It's not too far off of San Francisco, so we'll see. Um, ASW attack here. DMS, AK, okay. They're coming after the Seawolf, the SS Seawolf, right off the home islands. And 
they couldn't find us, essentially. That's that's what that came down to. We launched two torpedoes at the DMS, nothing happening. So a destroyer minesweeper, that's a DMS. Now we've got all of these. It, it goes around and shows you all the canceled recon flights. Uh, I just usually escape through that. It, it can give you some information. Oh, I didn't mean to escape through the sightings, though. Two Japanese ships near Basenga. We have four Japanese ships near Davao. Uh, Falcon reports a shape below the surface near Kaljati. And seeing a Japanese sub near Samarang. Okay. Uh, a morning air attack on a task force at Bataan. Okay, uh, the weather are, is severe storms. The Japanese are coming in at 15,000 feet with 11 nates, nate, nine lilies. We have two warhawks that got up in cap. Uh, doesn't look like anybody lost anything. Uh, they were coming after the mine sweeper bittern. Uh, did, I don't think that they even got any bombs off. So, okay. Um, morning attack on the 100th Chinese Corps here at Win Chow. Now remember, we just put the Flying Tigers here uh, in at this base here at Changsha, and they will start running cap, but I think that they only run it at about seven hexes, so I don't think we're going to get up any cap over the 100 Chinese down here at Win Chow. Uh, they had 43 zeros, so they brought a lot of escorts. Uh, seven eights, 25 lilies. They dropped... Uh, the 100 kilogram bombs, ground attack. Okay, we may be disrupted, but I don't think they have any Japanese forces in the area, so hopefully we'll recover that before they do. Uh, cap defending at Singapore. So here comes bombing missions into Singapore. It's going to be 34 Sallies, 14 Oscars, 11 other Oscars, another squadron. We got up 29 Buffaloes. Excellent. But this is not the result I'm looking for. Five damaged sallies to two destroyed buffaloes. That's not good enough. Um, and they did hit one of our transports. Uh, bomb hits two, heavy fires. This is the Meyer. Now, this is that Dutch task force that we sent up there to take out the Aussies. This is your fault, Stanley. <laughs> but we've got a transport that's hit on heavy fire. Hopefully, it can get into Singapore. Uh Sending this task force is going to draw a bombing to Singapore. If they spotted that, uh, they're going to light up Singapore. So we'll see. Well, they have spotted it now. They've hit the damn task force. So, okay. Um, morning air attack on the 25th Group Army. Again, it went chow. So maybe the Japanese are going to start moving down this way to try to take the coastal area around Wen Chow. It was 20 nates, 29 lilies. We did damage a lily. Nothing else happened. Maybe some disruption, but nothing else. We got some sightings here at Lingayan. No surprise there. Uh, we've got some sightings there over Mole Mine. No surprise there. Uh, Mersing. Okay. I'm kind of surprised they haven't landed at Mersing yet. That may be coming shortly. A lot of recon bombers kind of going over China but not a whole not a whole lot happening out there they did a couple of those ground attacks but we got more of these patrols I'm not going to zoom through it this time uh... I'm at my wits end trying to ship aircraft on cargo ships okay if you have a transport ship in the port with an air group, select load troops and you will see the air group to load if it is not restricted. Uh, right. Yep, yep. So, yeah, they will they will show up as squadrons, you know, each individual squadron. But you, one reason you may have difficulty doing it, go up and see what their command is. You may have to buy them out. I mean, I've had the same problem where I'm trying to load them on. I'm like, why won't they load? And I go up and I see that they're restricted to the West Coast Command. And I'm like, oh, okay, I've got to go turn it to the Southwest Pacific Command or whatever the hell the command is um, that you need it. Or if you want it to go to Hawaii to the Hawaiian Command. I, you probably already know that. I'm just saying that I've had that 
happened to me a lot where I'm like, load, load, why won't you load or why won't you show up? And it's because they're just in the wrong command and you haven't bought them out yet. But afternoon an air attack on Changsha. Ooh, ooh, the flying tigers are up at Changsha. Excellent. Um, 42 zeros. Wow, a lot of escort. They outnumber us not quite two to one in fighters. Six Nels, 33 Bettys. That's a big force. Uh, we got one da destroyed on the Nell. On the Bettys, we got three destroyed, two damaged. Ooh, we had four planes destroyed. That's the worst result for the Flying Tigers yet. Uh, up to this point, I think they had only had one aircraft destroyed, and I believe that was destroyed on the field. And so that is their first uh, real combat losses. They also got hits on the airbase. Uh, the airbase hits, airbase supply hits, and 33 runway hits. That's not a good result for us. I don't, I don't like that at all. If they keep hitting the runway like that, we'll just have to get out of Changsha. Now, luckily, there's a crap ton of airfields we can go to in uh, China. Uh, now they're attacking near Bataan. Okay, six lilies. We got the one Warhawk up. They were, again, going after the Minesweeper Batern. Uh, which is really the only ship we have back here, or one of the onlys, I should say. Uh, Clark Field. Uh, oh, wow. So we did get some sh some planes up, uh, but one was just, well, one was damaged. We didn't get the Warhawk up, and it was destroyed on the ground. Uh, they got four more runway hits at Clark Field. So we're getting to the point where if there's anything left at Clark Field, we got to get it out. Stanley, you did it? You got him out of Georgetown? Stanley, you got too big of a heart to be an admiral, my friend. You're trying to get Aussie and Brit troops out of everything. Uh, but that's great. That's cool. I'm glad you did that. Casca666. Uh, yeah, I, I can't even tell you the number of times that's happened to me where I've diddled around for three or four minutes and couldn't figure out why uh, something wouldn't load, and it was because of the... Uh, it was restricted at that point uh, with its command. So, okay, we got some more coming in here to air attack near Singapore. All right, 17 Sallies, 13 Oscars, 19 Oscars, unescorted. Uh, we damaged three Sallies. Two of our Buffaloes were destroyed. Uh, oh, okay, so they sunk just immediately. One hit and sunk this transport ship. The Kajang. Okay, that's not great. We're making them pay a little bit, but those are not great results for us in the air this turn. Uh, Kuala Lumpur is coming under bombing now. 21 and 15 on the bombers. Uh, we damaged one KI-30 AN. One airbase hit, one, run one runway hit. So no real damage. Not much. Now they're bombing Clark Field again. Bombers hit. They hit the port this time, so we're not even using the port anymore. Okay. And we're certainly not using the port at Clark Field. If we do, it's at Manila, but we're not bringing anything in there anymore. Hmm. Rabul. Here we go. Um, 20 Bettys coming in at Rabul. Didn't do anything. Excellent. But that's just the beginning of an invasion force. You know that. They've now bombed it, I think, three or four straight turns. So, unless they're just doing it for fun. Now then, they're hitting this base force that's moving up Burma here. The the real skinny part of Burma. They're, that base force is getting hightailing it out of here. They're bombing it again. 27 Sallies. We did damage two of the Sallies, so we made them pay a little bit for six casualties. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is. If they want to bomb these base forces out here, all right. You know, they're going to bomb somewhere. I'd rather them bomb there than Rangoon. Cole said, transfer out bomber pilots in an AG. Can't figure out how to just pull pilots out and not aircraft. Uh, you can't just do pilots. I mean, you could send them back to the pilot pool, but you can't just like uh, load up a bunch of pilots 
Uh, hmm. Yeah, you can't just do that just with pilots. Uh, surface combat check. Divide cripple task forces. All right. The pilots move with the planes. Unless they're in the pilot pool, uh, and then they don't, of course. Uh, the Oh, hey, we had one of our SSS-40s out here. Um, they got onto this Japanese task force near Vigon. So just off the coast here of Luzon. Uh, we got into one. Uh, torpedo hits one, heavy fires, heavy damage. Now these SSS-40s, uh, so the submarines, the S designation here, they carry Mark 10 torpedoes, and they're much more effective. Even though I think that those were the interwar submarines, uh, they're actually more effective than the later models, because just because of the torpedoes. Um, you can check that, but I'm pretty sure they carry the Mark 10s. Also, I think maybe the S's, mm, I don't want to say that for sure, but I think their power system is different. Uh, I think I think at this time all subs are diesel powered, right? But I think it was a different kind of diesel or something. Uh, and so the S's are a little louder, um, but they have more effective torpedoes is what it comes down to. All right, now we're moving units around. You can see them moving in Australia down Java, out here in the U.S., West Coast. Um, what is this? Oh, ground combat near Wu Chang. All right. So right here. Wow, they're coming after Cheng Sha. Don't like that. But they're not coming with much. 1,144 troops. Uh, keep bringing that. We'll, uh, it, it was just a bombardment attack, and so nobody's really going to lose anything. Uh, but we have a full core here when you put this one together. So, you know, we've got a lot at Changsha. So if they want to attack... The, okay, all right. So now they're into us at Chusen. And that's 52,000 Japanese troops. We had 22,000. I mean, it's not a small force, right? Uh, but they had 495 guns and 216 vehicles. A total assault value of 1841. Woo, ouch. Uh, their odds were two to one, a little better than two to one. Hey, we caused four, over 4,000 casualties, so we got the better of this one. Uh, we caused 4,000 casualties. Uh, we took 1940. Uh, we had nine squads destroyed. They had nine squads destroyed. All right. Uh, we lost 15 guns. They lost 31. Uh, so all in all, that's pretty nice result for us there. Uh, now then, bombardment attack out near Kusai, and that is 1,422 Japanese troops. So they're attacking with smaller numbers than what we've got. And you'll see that often in China because they have better, the Japanese have better troops, the Chinese have more troops, uh, but they're coming with really small amounts here. Uh, this 72 to 1 on the assault value, that's again that Lusu war area that I'm trying to get. It's a headquarters, so it can't really be destroyed, and we're trying to get it out of here. It's got nothing left. Okay, we're retreating. That's fine. Ground combat near Cheng Chow. Ooh, okay. This is us. This is that deliberate attack I did in Cheng Chao. I wish I could move this. Okay, we were thinking about things in a new game. I wish I could move this combat summary window. But you've got Luoyang and Cheng Chao that are right up there, right behind a river, right? And you've got to hold that. It's on that major railway. And so the Japanese had come into that hex, but not with big numbers. And as you can see, it was only 8,800 troops. So I, I re-attacked them while they were in the hex. So allied deliberate attack, we should knock them back. Now, they did get a bonus for their leaders, but they're not very experienced. Uh, they lost 1,600 men. We lost 500. Nice result for us there. Okay. And hopefully, we'll knock them out of that hex. Because I don't like them being over that river and in the hex. It allows them to bring other troops into that hex and uh, without any penalty. Yep, Alonzo's got it exactly right. Alonzo, you know a lot about this game. I like it. Keep stopping by. Uh, yep, you put them in the general reserve. 
you know, put them in the pool, the reserve, take them out, uh, and then in two weeks or so, you can bring them back down. Uh, after arrival in Calcutta and all our all airframes are repaired, transfer out bomber pilots. Upgrade to the Mohawk 4. I'll have to go look at the Mohawk 4. Those, are those like bomber fighters and you're changing them over to fighters? The Mohawk is a fighter. That's what it upgrades to. That's that's what I would assume. So you have bomber pilots right now, right? They're they're set up as bombers. Um, you're going to have to change that over to fighters. You move the bomber pilots back to the reserve and you pull down eight new fighter uh, pilots and you start training them. Because they are trained to specific roles, whether it be bombers, fighters. Um, and so just release your pilots back to the reserve and uh, upgrade it to the Mohawk, which I assume it must be a fighter, or at least it's a fighter bomber that you can run as a fighter, and uh, then pull down eight fighter pilots. That's, yeah, hopefully that is what you're asking. Uh, we've got a lot of things arriving here for next turn, so I may have to go back and look at the spreadsheet. I haven't for a while of all of the things that are have arrived in the last couple of days, uh, and it looks like we got quite a bit. Overall, this was a decent turn when it came to um, the sea war, the naval war. We did blow up some things with our subs, and there now the game has moved on to December 22nd. We did pretty well with our subs. We uh, blew up a couple of things. Um, the air war was really disappointing for me this time. We didn't do very well, I didn't think. There was a lot of unescorted Japanese missions that we didn't get as much. Those buffaloes at Singapore did not do much, or not as good as they should have. Uh, they had some unescorted bombers that came in, got into our transports. It looks like we're going to lose a couple of transports off that. Uh, that was probably an ill-advised move to send them up there in the first place. There are, what, eight-point ships. I'm not going to cry over it, but... Ultimately, the, I would have expected the Buffaloes to do better. We've lost our first Flying Tigers in combat. Lost four of them to 43 zeros. So it was 43 zeros, 25 of that H-81 plane that the Flying Tigers fly. Uh, we did more damage than they did, but it was pretty close. And you expect better results than that with the Tigers. Uh, other than that, uh, ground forces, I thought, in China did great. As a matter of fact, I was kind of surprised how well they did this is the battle uh that's not the battle i'm talking i was looking at that and i got scared for a minute you can see these are like twin bases up here i was looking at this or wanted to look at this this is the battle we fought here at cheng chow and what i was describing was the japanese had crossed over and gotten over the river when they do that and have kind of a bridgehead over here, they could have brought this force over here with no penalties because they're already in the hex. I wanted to drive them out of here. So we did a deliberate attack, and we really did well in that battle. Uh, and we did drive the Japanese back, which is always a great result for the Chinese uh, in this war. I mean, you know, they're just trying to hang on. Uh, as you can see, we are coming on Xinyang here. We now have these guys marching out of Ai Cheng down here to Hang Kao. Uh, gonna try to take Hang Kao and maybe cut off some more Japanese forces. These guys are completely cut off. We have them totally surrounded at Xinyang. They can't get anything through here in the railway. Nothing up the major. The only way they can do it is to bring it all the way up here and around and up to Xinyang. And so we're going to go, tr you know, shut that door and hopefully bag ourselves, I don't know, I mean, a full Japanese core potentially, maybe a, a division or two. We'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned, as they say in the business. Uh, uh, Munster76. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Has your air guide in Warn These 2 an example of how to transfer planes to a new airfield manually? It does. It does. As a matter of fact, uh, both 
part seven and part eight, I show that, okay? And so if you click on the AOG, so when you're in the air planning phase and you click on the AOG, it'll bring up in blue the airfields where that AOG is stationed, all right? If you hold down the shift key and you just move your mouse around, it will keep the same AOG box. So let's call it KG-77 or something. It'll keep that same box and you could move it to new airfields and then right click and they'll go to those airfields. All right, but go check out episode seven and eight. Stanley, I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger. It was Colonel Mustard in the library with a candlestick. Uh, no, I, it was not. Uh, who knows what's going to happen out here in China? Uh, that's what keeps you coming back for more. Or maybe it's uh, my historical references. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's you just like the game. You're like, I wish this guy would just get out of that mini map so I can see the mini map. Uh, anyway, you guys have a good one. I'm going to be back on the channel later. I'm not exactly sure what time. I'm going to do War in the East 2. I'm also going to do that Warhammer 40k game, Battle Sector. No lie, I really like the game. I'm not getting paid to say that. I do like that game. It reminds me of kind of an XCOM 2 or a Field of Glory 2 Medieval in some ways, uh, but set in the year in the 41st century uh so anyway i'm gonna play that one again um i like it so i'm gonna play it again anyway you guys be good uh happy holidays to those of you celebrating if you're not happy day to you as well thank you so much this has been strategy gaming dojo i'll talk to you next time